Listen to those sweet sounds. And let's add a custom sound and block sound type to Minecraft. 121 Minecraft modding course is available down below, with over 11 hours of content covering everything from the basics all the way to block entities and custom mobs. Oh, ho, 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 ho. right. We find ourselves back in Nintendo once more, and in this tutorial, we'll be adding a custom sound as well as a custom sound type, meaning a custom block sound type to Minecraft. Now, this is going to be more straightforward than you might think. However, as always, right, as we have previously discussed in many tutorials before, Minecraft modding is very strange. Therefore, sounds will always be quite strange. So in our Kaupmjo tutorial mod package, we're going to right click new package called sound. And inside of there, we'll need one new Java class called the mod sounds class. Inside of here, we're going to be able to register all of our sounds. And the way to do this is with a public static final deferred register of type sound event. And this is going to be the sound underscore events over here equal to deferred register dot create forge registries dot sound events. And of course, tutorial mod dot mod ID and whether is a deferred register that is also a public static void register method with an I event bus over here. And as always, of course, all of the code is available to you down below in the GitHub repository. So you can double check it as well. Highly recommended to always do that. Now that we have the basic mod sounds class set up, we want to call the register method right here, mod sounds dot register, passing in that event bus. And there we go. To register our custom sounds, we're going to make a simple helper method, nothing too crazy. It's going to be a private static, and this will return a registry object of type sound event. And it's going to be the register sound event method with a string name parameter. And then we're going to return sound underscore events dot register, passing in the name, and then passing in a supplier of a sound event dot create variable range event exactly with a resource location from namespace and path passing in the mod id which is going to be tutorial mod tutorial mod dot mod id and then passing in the name and there we go that's going to be the helper method done and now we are finally to the point where we can create the sound events themselves they are super freaking easy public static final registry object of type can you guess it yes a sound event and this is going to be the chisel underscore use equal to the register sound event method chisel underscore use and there we go. So this will, well, will be heard when we use the chisel. We're going to change that in a second. And that is the whole idea. Now we're going to duplicate this once because we also want the break steps, place, hit and fall sound for the magic block. So that's going to be the sounds that we're going to add specifically as a block type for the magic block. And that's going to be the first one here is the magic underscore block underscore break. And of course, always change the name here to magic underscore block underscore break. And then we want to duplicate this an additional four times and change this up to bl magic block step and magic block step right here. We want to change this to the magic block place and the magic block place right here. There we go. We want to change this to the hit and then this to the hit as well. And then right here, what we want to do is this is the fall, the last, but certainly the least. I actually don't really um, understand the fall one, the fall sound, but it is basically, it's kind of strange, but we'll actually hear all of them in a second. Now, to actually use these as a block sound type, what we want to do is we want to also make that a sound type. To do that, we're going to make a public static final forge sound type, and we're going to call this the magic underscore block underscore sounds equal to a new forge sound type with a 1F for the volume and the pitch. And then we simply go down the list mod sounds dot block break over here. So that's going to be the break. And then we just continue to do that basically until we well, reach the last one. And there we go. Mod sounds is going to be the place. Absolutely. Mod sounds dot is going to be the hit. And lastly, once again, the fall. And there we have it. Let's just format this just a little bit differently. There we go. And with that, the mod sounds class is actually done. We have registered our custom sound right here. We've registered the custom sounds for the block and we have the forge sound type. To use that sound type, we're going to go into the mod blocks class and literally just on the block behavior properties, call the sound method and then say mod sounds dot magic block sounds. And there we go. That's literally all we need to do here to use that new sound type basically for the blocks. And then to use the chisel use over here, we want to go to our chisel item. And instead of using the grindstone over here via the sound events, we're going to say mod sounds dot chisel use dot get. And all of a sudden we now will get a different sound. However, the question is, wait a second. What sound is it? Because we've not added any sounds and that is absolutely correct. 
as that all happens in the assets folder. So in a resources assets tutorial mod, we're going to make a new directory called sounds, very important sounds. And for this, I will copy over the six different sounds that we have. Those are going to be the, of course, the chisel use over here and then all the magic sounds. And note that all of them are OGG files. It's very, very important that all of them are properly formatted OGG files. So they have to be properly converted. And additionally, they have to all be in mono, right? So when it comes to stereo or mono, it has to be in mono. Otherwise, you will run into issues. Additionally, when we have this, we also need something else in the tutorial mode folder right here, and that is right-click new file called the sounds.json. Very strange that we have this, but yet it is indeed the case that this goes into assets tutorial mode, and this sounds.json file basically determines, or it sort of connects the sound event with the actual sound file. I'm going to write this out for the chisel, and then the rest I'm going to copy over because it's basically all the same. So we have the chisel underscore use over here, and we what we'll... What you'll find is that this name right here has to match the name given right here. So th those two names have to match. We can then have some subtitles. This is just for an example here. So sounds.tutorialmod.chisel underscore use. And then we can also have some sounds. This is a list. And this list of sounds is tutorial, tutorial mod colon chisel underscore use. The sounds right here are this list in theory. Of course, you can have multiple ones and those could be, let's say, different, right? I mean, maybe maybe something like this, right? For example, then the first one would be underscore one. And then it would just randomly choose between the two. Now, of course, in our case, we only have one because this name right here basically refers back to the name of the OGG file. So it's going to look at for the sounds in the tutorial mod folder. And it's going to be called chisel underscore use OGG. That is what the sound is basically has, has to be called. And the same thing then goes for all of the rest that we're going to copy over. Like I said, the name right here always has to match the name right here. And in our case, the names of the OGG files also match the name of the sound events, but they don't have to. It's very important that they don't have to match because obviously if you have multiple different sounds right here, then how would multiple sounds like multiple files have the same name? Obviously, that doesn't work, right? So that would be the idea. Highly recommended to also just test this out a little bit, like try out some different things and just experiment with it. That is always a great idea to basically test this out. But with this done, I believe we should actually have everything we're going to need for this particular tutorial over here. So we have the different chisel sound over here. We have the sounds all registered. We have the sounds done here. The OGG files are in. So I would say, let's jump into the game and hear if it works. All right, friends, back in Minecraft. And let's just try the chisel first of all. But first of all, let's just crank up the volume completely. And then... As much as you might not believe it, this is definitely a different sound from the grindstone. I'm telling you, this is definitely a different sound. And let's do the magic block first of all, setting it down. Absolutely a different sound if I walk over it. That is a pink and sparkles. That's what it sounds like. I can also break it. There we go. And then this is the hitting sound. Might get a little bit on your nerves if you continue to do that, but that's fine. And then the falling sound, you have to be in survival mode. So you'll also hear the, the sort of the leg breaking sound. But behind that, there's going to be the custom sound. So let's hear. It was definitely like a little bit of a cling in there. So there you freaking go. That's going to be all of the custom sounds. And I'm going to be real, I think. They're pretty magical, and that is custom sounds added to Minecraft. Awesome. As per usual, all of the code and everything you might need is linked in the description below, but that can be it for this tutorial right here. Next time in this video, we'll continue with sounds by adding a custom music disc. Hope to hear you there. So, yeah.